The Jefferson County Basketball Showcase is back and better than ever on WMIX and WMIXSports.com. Featuring Waltonville, Weber Township, Woodlawn, Wayne City, and Cesar Valier. The Showcase is presented by Community First Bank of the Heartland. Welcome back to Personal Banking. The Showcase is also sponsored in part by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what healthcare should be. The Collision Pros at Cesar Auto Body. Newell Furniture and the General Store in Woodlawn. Ren Lake College. It's time. Visit your virtual counselor at rlc.edu. And by Coach House Garages. Ford Square and King City Chrysler. You can count on us. The Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois. State Farm Agent Scott Owens. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And People's National Bank. With the Coach House Garage's pregame show, the showcase starts now. Welcome into a rocket Cesar Valera High School Gymnasium tonight. Senior night, conference championship on the line as the SB Lady Devils take on the Goreville Lady Black Hats. A very pleasant Monday evening wherever you may be listening in on WMIX 94.1 FM or at or online at WMIXSports.com. I'm Denny Swinson. We'll be bringing the play-by-play. Joining me in just a moment will be the voice of Mount Vernon Athletics here on WMIX. Mr. Chris Hugo. This is the pregame show sponsored by Coach House Garages. If you're in need of a garage, to take your car prize possession. Coach House Garages has the building for you. Call Daryl Sheridan in 244-1061 for a free on-site estimate. It is a packed house here tonight. It says it is a field house. Senior night, conference title on the line, Chris. Lots of emotions in the air as Goreville and SBW get ready to go. Well, a lot of emotion in the air. Probably the pack, most packed place to fit last year's sectional semifinal when the Lady Devils played the Hornets of Nashville. And, of course, tonight, conference implications on the line. Lady Black Hats come in a perfect record, 7-0 and in the Black Diamond West. And then, of course, you look ahead to the SBW Lady Devils there, 7-1. and Their lone loss is on the road at Goreville. This one's going to be interesting here tonight. Interesting matchup, Goreville and SBW. A lot of stuff on the line, a lot of interesting scenarios. We'll give more of those with a little more information about this game coming up after the break. You're listening to SBW Lady Devils Basketball on the Showcase on WMIX. A coach house garage is money well spent. On craftsmanship that's sure to get compliments. Don't cut corners on your garage. It adds value to your home. That's why you need to see the professionals at Coach House Garages. Choose from a variety of Coach House Garage designs or they'll build one to your design. For a dealer near you, check the yellow pages in Mount Vernon or go online to coachhousegarages.com. More than just a garage. More than just a garage. It's a Coach House. Do you farm or operate an agriculture-based business? Then Community First Bank is for you. Hi, I'm Steve Down, Agribusiness Lending Officer at Community First Bank. With our roots firmly planted in Jefferson County, we offer the stability, strength, and personal attention that you deserve. Community First Bank wants to be your financial partner with customized products for both your personal and farm banking needs. Stop by any of our five convenient Jefferson County locations to see how we can help your business grow. Community First Bank with locations in Mount Vernon, Woodlawn, Dix, and Ina. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Group. Daily schedules, scores, and more. Find WMIX Sports on Facebook. Back to the showcase on WMIX. Back to a loud FB, FB Dignity. It's Cesar Blair, Danny Twinsky, Chris Hugo alongside on the Coach House Garage's pregame show. If you're looking for a garage builder that will build a quality garage at a fair price with a five-year rent warranty and financing available to the Coach House Garage's for you. Call Daryl Sheridan at 244-1061 for a free on-site estimate. Two teams with only three losses. Two teams with 43 total wins. Goreville State ranks. Sets are climbing up to a bowl of respectability. It's a matchup with a lot of territory, a lot of totals on the line here tonight, and most importantly, a conference win. But for Goreville, Chris, super sectional first last year, state champs in softball. They'd like to get to Bloomington normal next year, uh, this year. That way they can get up to state, get a trophy in basketball like softball. Well, that's the thing. And you take a look at what they've had to run into. They ran into Cal Tarek Feature City in the super sectional in Salem last year. For all intents and purposes, if you're able to get out of the, the regional, you assume they will. Able to get out of the sectional they are hosting this year, which you assume that, that is a possibility. You also take a look at the fact, Danny, that Goreville will run into a team of either Cal Eric Feature City again, possibly, or the Cam Raiders, of course, uh, Central A&M, of course, out of Moequa. 
But you take a look at those possibilities facing them in the postseason. But this is a big one here tonight. Going to be a good set. They've already beat SBW at home. But their lone loss is to the Mount Carmel the Aces and, of course, the famed Tyra Buzz, who is second in the nation in scoring, according to Max Preps. And you take a look at what they faced this year. They actually had that Mount Carmel team beat in the fourth quarter, but a comeback by Tyra allowed the Aces to win that game. So you take a look at their 24-1 and mark. You take a look at the fact that they are 7-0 in a tough BDC West Conference. This has the making for an instant classic here tonight. Can FBW pull it off here at home? That is the question. Their losses are to a vintage team that they could see in the regional. They will see in the regional, actually. And, and you just kind of take a look where well, you assume, of course. It's, I forgot they have a 3-6 matchup at the 16 regional. But if they win that first game, then they would play a number two Benton in the semifinals. So you have a matchup of the game back on December the 17th, the week before Christmas Eve, that they lost. Not a bad bet team in that postseason. This, conversely, even though Goreville's a 1A team, is a heck of a test for the 2A SBW Lady Devils. Big test there tonight for Goreville. They're looking to get to that super. If they can win the regional, they go to their own super, which will help out greatly. SBW will do everything on the road in the postseason. We need to take another break when we come back. We'll talk a little bit more about this one and maybe some other games around the area as well as you hear the SB fans finish up. Very nicely done. You're listening to... SVW Lady Devils basketball to showcase on WMIX. I'm Eddie Brown with Dave Bowers. We'll look at your next round weather. Breezy and warm tonight with a shower on a couple of occasions, a low of 56. Tomorrow, cloudy, breezy, warm, couple of showers. I near the record of 70 set in 2002. Tomorrow night, periods of rain and a heavy to severe thunderstorm. Breezy and mild, a low 45 to 49. And then on Wednesday, it's breezy and turning colder with clouds and a stray shower. Temperatures will wind up in the low 40s. Next round weather from WMIX, Mount Vernon, Illinois. I know you've heard about mortgage rates being all-time lows, but have you done anything about it yet? Hi, I'm Rick Pig, mortgage lender at Community First Bank. There's never been a better time at buying a home or refinancing an existing mortgage. The sooner you act, the more you save, and we'll be there to help you through every step of the way. For more information, visit us at comfirstbank.net or stop by one of our five locations. Community First Bank with locations in Mount Vernon, Woodlawn, Dix, and Ina. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Sessor Auto Body would like to take a moment to remind everyone driving to and from the game to drive safe and be alert. Sometimes events happen beyond your control. When it does, take your vehicle to the collision pros. Sessor Auto Body is pre-approved by most insurance companies throughout Southern Illinois. This allows them to get the parts ordered quicker, getting you back on the road faster and in showroom condition. Sessor Auto Body, 602 South Park in Sessor, or call 625-3523. That's 625-3523. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, call 911. We're worldwide. This is the showcase on WMIX and WMIXSports.com. Presented by Community First Bank. If you're in need of a garage, fix your car or prize possession. Coach House Garage has the building for you. Call Daryl Sheridan 244-1061 for a free on-site estimate. Got to mention tonight, Chris, for going further. The SVW JB team remains undefeated, winning 24-19. Talent, lots of it going out the door graduation this year, but boys, an undefeated JV team, there's more on the way through this Rick Metcalf pipeline here at SBW. Well, it's one of those things where we have always preached that you can't just take a look at the JV team and assume success at the next level, but knowing that John Shadow has had this team undefeated, and of course, Rick Metcalf going in a time or two, you take a look at what they have at the varsity level with Coach Rick Metcalf, you know that with them being undefeated this year, that is going to lead to bigger and better things when they turn into varsity players next year, so Congratulations thus far on an undefeated streak for Lady Devils JV. It's just shut out in the first quarter, up 12-0. We're up 18-3 to at the half. It's a very impressive first half by the Lady Devils. You take a look at the Black Cats JV, Danny, and you see that struggle here tonight, but you know that they're going to become a great varsity team in the not-too-distant future as well. And that'll be a struggle at SBW. Still has a big road game this week. It's a big week for SBW. You get Goreville home here Monday night, then you got to go to DRC later in the week. Two big games to get up for here this week for SBW to try to remain focused 
that have a chance to at least get a die in that Western Division. Well, that, and you also take a look at the CRC team, Danny, that's number four in their own regional. And if you want to talk about a ship on the shoulder, that should be a team that has one in their own regional, but the number four team. Well, they are one of the better teams in the South in Class 2A as well. Just won't get a lot of pub behind Nashville, Benson, uh, Massac County's now three, of course, so we can throw that aside. But some of these other 2A teams kind of overshadowing Coach May's ERC Lady Tornadoes, maybe not getting the credit they deserve. So that's a big matchup this week as well for the Lady Devils when they go southward here in just a couple of days. And it's hard to believe we've come to the final week of 1A and 2A girls basketball, but next week starts the regionals. And We'll have plenty of basketball games at Elvarado as well. And we'll have that as well. That JV score is brought to you by Scott Owens and State Farm Insurance. Talk to your neighbors and talk to Scott Owens. See why State Farm Insurance, more drivers than Geico and Progressive combined. Great service plus discounts. Like your good neighbor, State Farm agent Scott Owens is there. Both teams still warming up, winding down the last couple of minutes here. And, again, I go back to the other side of the equation in this one. In front of what has turned out to be a boys game size crowd across the way. It is full on the SBW side. The Gordonville side in front of us is filled, and there are people to our right, including Benton Ranger S head coach Andy Sloan and staff here scouting this one. Mac Crane, assistant coach for Todd Tripp, the boys basketball team at Floorville is there tonight as well. So a lot of people tonight off on Monday night coming around here to watch the game. Well, and some scouting being done, of course, and really this is a great game because you take a look at the schedule for SVW, you automatically do it through games. They're going to be a great test for them. And that was Floorville coming in with returning a lot of the talent from an Elite Eight team a year ago. But you just had a feeling that this one, not a lot of games going on tonight for some of these teams that will see an SVW or a Goreville in the postseason. Great one to take in. And, you know, Goreville's very blessed to have a lot of community support on both sides of the gender. They're boys sports, they're girls sports. But, you know, we talk about how, how friendly class expansion has been to Woodlawn just west of us. But it's also been friendly to Goreville with a lot of baseball success, some softball success, basketball success on both sides. It's, they have really turned out to support their team, even when they were making successful runs in the two classes. The two class system, of course, Goreville, right up there with Woodlawn as far as successful teams, as you mentioned in the four class in Goreville, looking to do some more running as far as girls basketball and softball is concerned. We are lining up for the National Anthem. We'll step out for a break. Come back. Starting line for the opening step. You're listening to SVW Lady Devils Basketball in the Showcase on WMIX. After many successes this season, the Showcase teams look for strong finishes to the regular season. Hi, this is Terry Prosize from Community First Bank. Tune in all month long on WMIX or log on to WMIXSports.com for the best broadcast coverage of Woodlawn, Waltonville, Weber Township, Cesar Valier, and Wayne City. It's the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX, presented by Community First Bank of the Heartland. Welcome back to Personal Banking, member FDIC. People's National Bank understands how much small business means to a community. That's why we have been supporting the local economy of Southern Illinois for over 100 years by providing commercial loans to area businesses. And our loan decisions are made right here in Southern Illinois. Hi, this is Jim Flagg, commercial banker for People's National Bank in Mount Vernon. Stop by today to find out what a true community bank is all about. People's National Bank proudly supporting local businesses since 1909. There's still time to save at Newell Furniture in the General Store in Woodlawn. Newell Furniture's store-wide cleanup sale is still in progress with drastic furniture markdowns and extra cash discounts. Save on all Lazy Boy reclining furniture, sofas, holiday, TV consoles, bedrooms, dining rooms, ceiling bedding, and more. Plus save 75% off all Christmas items, 50% off select merchandise at the general store. Newell's and Woodlawn, cleaning up to save you more. The Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois proudly welcomes Dr. Brian Steinke to their medical staff. Dr. Steinke earned his medical degree at the University of Illinois in Chicago and has degrees in anatomy and physiology from UC Berkeley, and he brings prestigious credentials to the center. Dr. Steinke is a gifted physician and contributor to orthopedic textbooks. Call 618-242-3778 or visit their informative website at orthocenter-si.com. Back out to the WMIX Sports Mobile Studios on WMIX at WMIXSports.com. This is the Showcase, presented by Community First Bank. Time for the starting line. It's sponsored by People's National Bank. Just how many branches does People's National Bank have? Log on to peoplesnationalbank.com to try the branch near you. Over 100 years old, still growing People's National Bank. 
It's time for those starting lineups. I'll turn over to Chris Hugo for those. First for the visitors on the scoreboard, dressed their way black tonight, coached by Mike Delt. McGorville, Lady Back, Black Cats are going to go with three in the backcourt. Number 14, Haley Darnell. Number 15, Jessica Wright. And number 33, Allison Sullivan. In the front court tonight will be number 12, Allison Webb. And number 22, Brittany Pritchett. For the 24 and 1, Goreville Lady Black Cats. Taking a look now at the home team tonight on the scoreboard, the accessible there, Waltzville Lady Devils. We're going to go with their familiar three guard, two forward set in the backcourt tonight. It will be one of the seniors, number one, Ray Lappin, another senior, number three, Chelsea Miller, and a third senior, number 22, Megan Askew. Wild, your front court tonight, your forwards will be number 35, Michaela Williams, and number 40, Rachel Barlow for the 21 and 2 SBW Lady Devils. Coach by Rick Metcalf. Those starting lines brought to you by People's National Bank. They remind you, have instant access to your account anytime, anywhere with online banking at People's National Bank. Log on to peoplesnationalbank.com. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. It is absolutely electric here tonight. There is a full gym here with a lot of noise. This is going to be atmosphere, much like what you'll find in a couple of weeks in postseason. Well, this is one where they brought out everything. The kitchen stick included. They have the SB band here. Uh, they have their number one public address announcer here tonight. I mean, they have brought out everything. Uh, a great ceremony but prior to the game to honor their seniors. And you know what? It's a, a top-notch atmosphere here tonight. should be a great game and should be a great atmosphere all night as well. Good test for both teams. They get ready to go here in postseason play next week. And a big crowd, lots of energy. Senior night. Bittersweet night. You're excited. It's a big game, but it's bittersweet as well because it's your final game if you're SBW senior here on this floor. Your officiating crew tonight, Jim Searby, Corey Hepp, and Jody Getty, all from Pinckneyville, Illinois. Norville dressed in her black jerseys trimmed in gold and white. And Red Devils dressed in her white jerseys trimmed in maroon and black. We welcome all our listeners to us. In Goreville, Illinois, we know there are many listening down there tonight to this game as well. It'll be Williams against Webb in the center circle. Referee will jump in. Tip is controlled by the Goreville Lady Black Cats. The Cats will come across the timeline. It'll be a 1-2-2 from SVW to start. This may be one of the first times I've seen this out of a Rick Metcalf coach team in years. Left side, right with it on the dribble. Back to Webb on the deep left wing. Dribbles to the corner. Throws it out top of the key to Darnell. Three on the way for Darnell. It's short off the mark. Webb high for the rebound. Catches it. Falls down. Travels. And it'll go to SBW. Well, got the offensive board. Did everything right. Just lost her footing. Turns the ball over. We'll see if this is going to be an opportunity for the Lady Devils. And the Lady Devils will come down. It is man-to-man for the Goreville Black Cat. Nope, it's swap. Let's have to see what it is. Lappin goes to the rim and scores. The Orville came out in a junk defense. Didn't get much time to dissect it. We'll check it on the next trip. Corville with it on the right wing. Sullivan top of the key to Darnell. Left wing goes to Pritchett. Top of the key to Sullivan. Between the circles goes right side. Right wing to Darnell. Baseline she goes. Cut off top of the key past Sullivan. Goes to the free throw line. Pickpocketed. Sullivan recovers, though. Back on the dribble. Picks it up. Throws it out near the timeline to Pritchett. Pritchett back top of the key to Sullivan inside the web back out to Pritchett. Three on the way, no good. Out of bounds. And it'll go to SBW. Kind of wonder, an atypical 0 oh, of 2 from three point land for Gorgel to start. The fact they've taken two three pointers to start this game is somewhat of a conundrum in itself. But we'll see if the Lady Devils can turn this into a big opportunity. Here comes Miller. She tries to pass tip. Williams recovers to Marlowe. On the right wing, Marlowe goes baseline. Left wing pass, Lappin. The senior for a three. No good off the mark. A little strong rebound, Williams. Williams top the key to Miller in the corner, lapping. Baseline against Webb. Shot over Webb. No good. Rebound, Williams for SBW. Back to Marlowe. Marlowe will pull it back out. SBW will start up 2 nothing. Williams from 10 feet. Baseline, good. And Michaela Williams knocks down a jumper. It's 4 nothing. SBW. Here comes Bridget to the lane. Back out to Darnell on the left side. To right. Now it's between the circles. We'll start over. Corville down 4 nothing early. They're not going to be flustered. They've been in this situation. Webb on the right block turns, shoots foul. And Webb will go line to shoot two. You're not a number of credit scores, Mini First Bank of Heartland. If you're a person or business with needs and do the good and the bad, Mini First Bank of Heartland will stand by you. Rachel Marlowe picks up her foul, her first. Teams first. 
And Allison Webb will go to the line. Several members of that state championship softball team on this team here tonight. Webb hits the first. 4-1 SBW on top. All-Stars and Stitches. If you can put a logo on it, All-Stars and Stitches can print it for your school company organization. They can even do a parallel to Big Dave at All-Stars and Stitches in Plus Benton High School. Or call 435-5555. Webb calmly makes both. It's 4-2. to two. This one's going to be a dandy. Miller across the timeline. Miller with the basketball. On the dribble. And this, to me, looks like a little 1-3-1 one, one is what it is. Imagine that. Right corner, SQ shot, no good. Lapton's going to be breaking the law of verticality. Her first team second on the way. We see some people tweeting with us now. Remember, you can follow us on Twitter, at WMI Sports. We're tweeting content all the time. We're also on Facebook, facebook.com slash WMI Sports. Like us there. We put different stuff up all the time. We're going to put more stuff as the evening goes Did along. Did we ever congratulate that set tweeter on the birth of their rap? That set tweeter, uh, assistant coach Jane Garner. For both football and basketball at SBW, the recent birth of a child, he and his wife. We want to congratulate them on that. Scoreville with a shot, miss, rebound, goes out to the wings of Darnell. She misses a three. Miller down the lane for SBW. Turn, spin, shot, glass, good. Miller did two. Go ahead. Miller perfectly knows that paint, knew when to turn around, knew when to use the iron, did it that time. Great turnaround shot extensively back and forth. Sullivan gives off to right on the dribble handoff. Looks and picks it up. Left elbow. Now top to Keith Sullivan. Three on the way from her up. No good. Rebound Miller. Gordon ice cold to start. And a reach in foul to Pritchett. Her first team first. Well, and you kind of wonder, Danny. Again, we talk about how great they are from mid range and beyond. They are 0 of 5 from beyond the arc here in the first three minutes and 11 seconds. Don't know the last time I saw that on this team, but I also don't know the last time that they had five three-point attempts early. SVW with a basketball. Miller will hold up one finger. This is dribble out. Stop of the key to Lappin. Left wing tip. SQ recovers in the corner. Tries to work around. Gets it to Lappin. Down the lane. She comes on the dribble. Shot left good. Danny, I was just thinking that tip was going to end up being the best thing to have to the Lady Devils. And what it did is it disrupted the Black Cat defense as they started swimming toward the basketball and opened up that scene for Lappin. SVW up 8-2. That's a travel. Darnell took off, couldn't put the dribble down. With locations in Ina Dix, Woodlawn, and two in Mount Vernon, Community First Bank of Heartland is proud to be the official voice of the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase. 4.20 to go in the first quarter. SVW on top, 8-2 in front of a packed house here at Cesar Valera High School. SQ into the corner to Miller. Or Lappin has it, I should say, down the lane, loses the basketball, stolen away by Wright. She gets it up into the front court. Off the leg and stolen away. Here comes Miller to Lappin, who didn't get up. Laid back and gets the layup. Lappin with six points, and it's 10 to SBW with four minutes to go in the first. A lot of unselfishness for this Lady Devil team. It's made a lot of difference in this new year. Up eight right now, looking good. Turnover disadvantage belongs to Floorville, three to one. Odom spins and turns. Shot no good. Rebound Marl. That'll be a ball verticality break. That foul on Sullivan, her first team second, and this. Corville right now. Ice cold from the field. Can't get anything going. Pritchett's going to come back in for Darnell. We're also on the World Wide Web. Go to www.wmixsports.com. We have scores, schedules. We have archives of both highlights and audio games that we do. We also have a scoreboard on there. Scores all throughout the year listed, divided by days, conference, and tournaments. SPW lost out of bounds. They tried to lop it into Marlowe. Marlowe couldn't get the handle and go back to Goreville. 3.32 to go in the first quarter. It's 10-2. SVW on top here in the first quarter against Goreville at home. It's a 1-2-2 again from the Devil. With it on the left side is right. We'll dribble between. Goreville will survey the defense. Right wing pass to Pritchett in the corner to Webb. Top of the key. They're going to reverse the left side to Sullivan. Inside goes to Odom. Shot. No. Pass out. Right wing. Right. Three on the way. Good. Jessica Wright hits the three-pointer. It's 10-5. Lady Devils by five. SQ in the corner. Back out to Miller. Skip pass left block. Lappin goes to the rim. Shot blocked by Webb on a nice play. Webb gets the rebound. Webb throws it up to Pritchett. She'll bring it into the front court. Pritchett goes left wing to Sullivan. Comes around to the right elbow. Loose it. And we have something going on. What do we have going on? multiple different mechanics. Something fell on the floor, maybe? Down by the home bench, down on the corner. 
somebody dropped something, I guess, and rolled onto the floor. That's what it like. Yep. Debris timeout. Caution flag put up, green flag back on. Now it's Goreville with it. Darnell top of the key. Right wing goes to right. She'll get back to Darnell. Down the lane she comes. One hand runner. Glass is good. Darnell makes it 10 7. Goreville calmly getting themselves back into this game. Weren't rattled whatsoever now on a 5 0 run. Miller down the lane. Glass shot no good. Rebound Webb. Webb is a force underneath on pole stands and she kicks it out to right. We got an injured Goreville player as that shot by Darn Wright goes to the rim. No good. Rebound Marlowe. Pritchett has come up lame and she's limping back here on defense. That's laughing, blow fire, layup, hit and a foul. Ray Lappin fell flat in the water on that one. Yep. Right there, you can see Pritchett come up lame. That foul is on Oldberg, first team third. Pritchett is hobbled. She's holding on and she can't do anything. She's walking around trying to get her coach to Yeah, she's got her coach's attention. She's going to come out of the game laughing to the line. Laughing's already got a heat. And Pritchett comes out. She hurt. Well, I remember how tough that she was the, the two games that we did last year between these two teams. So she has to be hurting pretty badly to want to come out yeah, of the game. She doesn't want to come out very much. As I said, free throw from Lappin is up. No good off the mark. Rebound goes in the corner to Goreville. 12-7, uh-huh. Goreville up. And I win that bet, by the way. Goreville across the timeline. Left side to Darnell. Back on the right wing to West. Webb dribbles baseline against Maddie Garner's checked in the game, and there's a steal. Can Miller catch it? Nope. Great play by Nardell. Now she's trapped in the backcourt to get it in the foul. They're going to call a reach-in foul on number 13, Cheyenne Pittsburgh, to have checked in. That's their first team third. Right now for the Lady Devils, it's Miller, Lappin, Marlowe, the three starters, which Pittsburgh and Garner out front. In a 1-2-2, two, two, Pittsburgh will be on the point. To the right wing is Darnell. Picks up their dribble, holds and looks back out to right. Right down the middle, they're trouble with this one, two, two. Left wing pass to Sullivan in the corner to Webb. It's tipped and stolen away. West BW's defense right now very good. It is. And look at Rachel Barlow on that play, Danny. Most of the first quarter early on played a little tip. This got a little bit more aggressive on the defensive end. Almost came up with a big turnover. Baseline Sullivan out to Webb, top of the key. We're at the 128 mark. Three ball in the corner coming from Sullivan is good. <laughs> Sullivan knocks down a three, and it is 12-10. And right now, it's Dorville right back in this one, as we expect. Miller has a pass tipped and stolen. Wright has it for Dorville. Wright the other way on the left. Class no good. Rebound Darnell. Shot no good. Rebound Pitchford. Triple team to the foul. Pitchford got the rebound and was fouled on the play by Haley Darnell. Her first. WMI Sports Mobile Studio. Driven to the night by Fort Spring King City Chrysler. How we got to the ball game. Eskew will come back in for Miller. So it's Eskew, Lappin, Garner, Pitchford, and Marlowe here. And last minute of the first quarter, SBW led a big early. It's only down to 12-10. There's a pass. Webb on the field. Webb comes the other way and works on Lappin. Jump shot good and a foul. Yep. That's going to be a good call. Lappin gets her second team fourth. That's a good call by the official. Had she fallen straight back, probably would have been able to get the charge. But because she twitched her body back toward the bucket, it kind of gives you the sense that you're moving. That's going to be a block more often than not. That's one of those deals there is Lappin. That's the most important thing. Lappin's picked up her second foul. First free throw by Webb is good. It's 12-11. Gorbel down by one. They have got back in this ball game. Don't forget about the Saturday sports show every Saturday morning. From 8.08 a.m. to 10 a.m. on AM 940 WMIX as well as at WMIXports.com. Talk, yes, scores, and that WMIX Sports social media question of the week is becoming ever so popular. We are tied at 12 with under a minute to go in the first. Miller will bring it across the timeline for the Lady Devil. She's going to throw it left side to Eskew. Eskew out top of the key to Marlowe over to Lassen. I should say that's not Lassen. That's Miller. Down the lane she comes. Shot blocks and a foul. I noticed one thing, Chris, the last two or three times SVW's come down the floor. It cost them the last couple of trips. Didn't hear as Wright picks up the fouls. In fact, they're starting their offense with the first pass just as they get across the timeline. The angle's too far, and Gorgel's been able to get to those passes a couple of times. No, and when they started the game on the nice run, I believe 10 2 was the initial run to start this game. What they were doing is they were waiting until about the top of the key and maybe the free throw line before getting the offense really started. That's what allowed them the better ball movement there if we catch Gorgel off guard more time. 
It's almost as if Goreville knows what's coming when they start it so early. And Miller makes the first. She'll get another. It's 13-12. Lady Devils on top by one. Second free throws up and in. 14-12. Lady Devils by two. They will pressure. The one, two, two, three-quarter court press. As Darnell brings it across and throws it right side to right, who crosses the timeline. Down the lane, she comes, kicks the right side. Odom loses the basketball. Right got it back in the corner, gets it in the Sullivan. Shot blocked. Gets a rebound to right. Now they're going to reverse to Odom on the right block. Jump shot right side, no good. Rebound goes to Darnell. And a foul. Scoreville crashing the glory boards right now. Those Lady Black Cats have earned a trip to the free throw line as Williams will pick up her first for Lady Devils in the fifth on SBW. An unprecedented five offensive rebounds just in this first quarter, obviously. Only one quarter we played thus far, but just an incredible job crashing the offensive glass has led to many more opportunities for these Black Cats. Solomon the trigger. Looking, throws top of the key to Webb. She'll come down, spin at the right elbow. Down the lane, she comes, layup, no good for the foul. For a tall and as muscular as Allison Webb is, she has the ball handling skills, which really puts her in an advantage over most post players that she has to go against. Well, and the person that next in line and hide on the devil still has a couple inch advantage, does Webb. The amazing thing about it is, for as tall as she is, and as much of a post player she is, her free throw shooting stroke is ever so smooth, and thus far she's perfect five of five for line. And another thing, too, is Ray Lappin has two fouls. Rachel Marlowe, a starter for SBW now, has two fouls as well. Radio Jinx not bothered, and we're tied at 14 with 12 seconds to go in the first quarter. Not a shooter like that. No. Miller across the timeline will dribble to the right side now pick it up. Inside pass goes to pitch for a jump shot. No good. Rebound tipped around. And that's how the first quarter will end. SBW 14, Goreville 14. We'll take a break and come back with the second quarter. You're listening to SBW Lady Devils Basketball in the Showcase on WMIX. Talk to your neighbors, then talk to State Farm agent Scott Owens. See why State Farm insures more drivers than GEICO and Progressive combined. Great service plus discounts. State Farm wants to get you all available discounts. That's why we apply the savings automatically during your quote. Want confirmation that you're getting all the discounts that you're eligible for? There's a State Farm agent right here in Jefferson County who's always happy to help. See Scott Owens in Mount Vernon or call 242-3770. With two new hospitals, trusted physicians, and dedicated staff, it's clear that our local healthcare industry is helping to make our community stronger every day. Hi, I'm Terry Prosize, a commercial lender and healthcare banking specialist at Community First Bank. I'm putting over 20 years of healthcare and business experience to work for our medical community and local businesses. Whether you have an expanding physician practice, an existing business, or hoping to start a new business, I have the financial prescription for you. Community First Bank with locations in Mount Vernon, Woodlawn, Dix, and Ida. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing. Daily schedules, scores, and more. Find WMIX Sports on Facebook. Back to the showcase on WMIX. Lewinsky and Chris, you go alongside... As the Lady Devils in Goreville tied at 14, second quarter, the Lady Devils will have the basketball. Miller dribbles to the right side, man to man now from Goreville. Garner to Marlowe in the corner with those two fouls. Picks up her dribble, cut off baseline to Williams. Williams dribbles into the paint. Mar- Garner top of the key, back to Marlowe, left baseline. Marlowe throws top of the key to Miller, and SBW will reset their offense. Tied at 14, just underway in the second quarter. Garner on the left wing, gets to a cutting Williams to the rim. Goes up strong shot, no good rebound, Goreville. They'll motor the other way, and that is right across the timeline on the left side. Right throws it top, the key to Webb, holds high above her head. Dribbles to the right side. Webb leads it on a dribble handoff for Darnell, left baseline pass to right, shot, no good, and a foul. Like what Goreville's done here, they're attacking SBW on the back side and their post players. And it's costing them right now. SBW can't handle the inside. Well, they're using the one through two against them, and they're attacking it in the right way. And, of course, we're getting SBW in early foul trouble. And that's been a major difference with Ray Lappin and Rachel Marlowe both with two fouls. It's kind of taken that post game away from SBW on the offensive end. And it's also made them pretty tentative on the defensive end as well. That tentative miss leads to a missed free throw for Wright. She'll get another. W. Mike Sports Mobile Studios here in the night by Fort Square and King City Chrysler. Second free throw by Wright is good. She's got one out of two. She has four. And Gordville has their first lead of the night of 15-14. Miller, Williams, Lappin, Pitchford, and Marlowe. He is Lappin and Marlowe have two fouls apiece. Coach Metcalf rolling the dice here in the second quarter. Lappin has it on the left wing. Full couple of dribbles. Throw right side to 
Miller. She'll go baseline, shot blocked by Webb. It tips over out of bounds, and it'll go to Goreville off SBW's hands. Part of the issue right now, Danny, in the paint is that if the Lady Devils are coming, and they sense the contact before it comes, they're going up too strong. Everybody late arriving here tonight for this one. Everybody trying to squeeze in the corner down there. Everybody's trying. Yeah, they are. Got to get here early if you want to see the whole game. With it on the right wing, Darnell inside the web, out of bounds off of SPW. And they'll stay with the Goreville Black Cats. Come start a bank in relationship, Community First Bank, where you won't be disappointed. Community First Bank of the Heartland. Welcome back to Personal Bank. Your location tonight at Dick Woodlawn and 2 in Mount Vernon. We're started early tonight. Five minute JV quarters because of senior night. Goreville turns it over, then finds it back. Webb with it, dribbles out to the top of the key. We'll pick it up and throw it inside to Odin. Tipped in a free chin foul on Pitchford. And now, SBW has 18 fouls. And again, Goreville will have an opportunity to really knock down some free throws. Being a good free throw shooting team that they are, Chris, they can really make some hay here in the second quarter. Well, they can. That's been the difference thus far. They were 6-6 six six off the mouth of Webb that first quarter. Goreville was just 3 of 17 from the field the first quarter. Those two threes made a big difference. They were just 1 of 10 at 5 to 10%. 1 and 1 coming from Taylor Odom. SBW starting to rack up some fouls. Cheyenne Pitchford has two. Lappin two. Marlowe two. The first free throw made by Odom. She'll get another. JB score tonight was 24-19 due to our early start. We don't have a lot of other scores, but when we do, Scott Owens and State Farm Insurance tells those. So how well do you really know if your bargain insurance is going to cost you big to have an accident? Give Scott Owens a call 242-3770 to get to a better state. Gordville misses the free throw, and SBW has it on the rebound. Lapping top of the key, right side Miller. Three ball on the way. Good. Three goggles go up for Miller, and it's 17-16 SBW. Webb between the circles throws it left corner to Allison Webb. That's Kayla to Allison. Spin move on Marlowe. Couldn't do much. Missed the shot. Odom rebound. Shot no good. Marlowe on the rebound for the Lady Devils. Marlowe up the right side into the front court to between the circles. Marlowe to Jones to Lappin in the left corner. Lappin goes baseline, loses it, and that should not be a shot. Should be on the floor. We'll see what the referee does. They're going to say she was shooting. That foul is on number 14. Haley Darnell, her second. That is the sixth on Goreville. Surprised that she got two shots. Big time late arriver showing up now. I bet you. Yeah. It's a who's who of coaches already oh in the building. We've got Wayne Hari from Nashville, Andy Salone from Benson here. Of course, watching SVW, they're all in the same regional. 18-16, Lady Devils on top by two. You know where he just came from. Yeah, he just came straight from the work. He's trying to slip his way up into the bleachers. He's got to take some notes. Second free throw up. No good by Lappin. Rebound goes to Webb. We could pass some info along to a mutual friend of ours and his and really call some funny by the end of the night. Goreville with a basketball. Sullivan top the key. Lob pass left baseline to right. Double team has to come around. Works her way into the lane. Ball squirts away over to Odom. Right block. No good. Marlow fights for it off of Webb out of bounds and along the SVW. We'll tell you, Community First Bank has more Jefferson County locations than anyone else. Locally owned with decisions made here. Crowd supports Jefferson County locations in Dick Lina, Woodlawn, and two. And Mount Vernon, our location is SBW. Miller across the timeline to Eskew on the right side. Throws in the right corner to Lappin on the dribble. Comes baseline. Loses her defender. Turn around jumper. No good. Ball tipped around to the floor. Maddie Gardner has it. Out to Miller. Down the lane she comes. Shot glass good. Miller scores in 2016. And we got to travel. Gorbell inbound the basketball, had a player in the way, and by the time that Wright could get her out of her eye vision, she'd already traveled, she couldn't put the ball down for the dribble. Well, there wasn't much she could do about that one. Now you turn it over with SVW up four and give them a chance to extend this lead and get Gorbell out of their comfort zone again. SQ in the left corner to Garner on the inbound. So let's see if SVW can capitalize on the turnover. Five minutes to go in the first half. Lady Devils up by four. This Gorbell team shown a lot of resiliency early on. Trailing early, but getting back in. Webb on the reach in field, still reaching, but Miller has to recover it. Goes to the SQ left block down the lane, left. We're going to have an offensive foul. Yep. That's a good call by the official. Ray Lappin's going to pick up her third. She was setting a screen, moving a player out, moving her out, boxing her out, and the shot hadn't even went up. 
That was a good call. That was a great call. I mean, it was a bulldozer in reverse. It's basically what it was for Mary Lapp. It just kind of had her arms extended in a more of a curve motion, not extended. It was just backing the player up, trying to allow FQ to get to the hoop, but he can't do that. Yeah, and that's three fouls. That's bad. So Lapp, yeah, Lapp is going to have to go out at the 451 mark. Sesser was up four. Will Wright note that. As SBW's up, and Lappin sits out the rest of the first half of those three fouls. It was a gamble. The player with two came up snake eye. With it on the left wing for Goreville is right. Down the lane, spin, going away, SQ. SQ has it, reach in foul Odom. And the Lady Devils will walk to the other end and shoot free throws as that's the seventh team foul on the Lady Black Cat. That's a big steal by Megan SQ. In this case, when you have players getting foul trouble, you've got to have people step up. And that's what's got to happen here. Speaking of stepping up, we'll pick a Crossroads Community Hospital player of the game when this one is over. Crossroads Community Hospital's emergency department pledges you'll be seen by physician within 30 minutes of your arrival. SQ at the line to shoot the one and one. First free throw up and in. She'll get another. 21-16. Lady Devils on top, laughing on the bench with three fouls. Marlowe's out there with two. Pitchford. On the bench with two. Second free throw, SQ, no good. Rebound goes to Jessica Wright for Goreville. She'll bring it across the timeline on the right side. Wright goes to the baseline, comes back to the left to Webb. Down the lane, the Webb comes, flat shot, left. Rolls off the iron. Rebound, Rachel Marlowe. Marlowe has the rebound. She's dribbling up into the front court. Across the timeline, left side, left block, kicks it back out to Garner. Three ball, Miller on the way, short off the mark. Rebound will go to Goreville. With 408 to go, Lady Black Cats trail by five. Follow us on Twitter at WMIX Sports. That's a great way to keep up to date with in game stuff. And we got all kinds of things going on. Timeout, Goreville. 408 to go in the first half. SBW leads 21 16. Key stretch of the game here, Chris. We're laughing going out that third foul. They were up four, they're up five now. It's interesting to see if the Lady Devils can keep this lead or at least make it bigger by the time it goes here by the halftime. Well, through about the first 40 seconds, that had much of an impact. question is, can the Lady Devils contain without Ray Leffin out there? She has 13 high, 9 points. That's a game high as well, but can they contain without her? That third foul, in which one you should never pick up because you, you know better than that, but we'll see if that haunts it down this final four minutes this, this second quarter. But it's a five-point game right now. Warville wants this time out to talk it over. We're going to see what kind of adjustments they make in the huddle. And will they be strong enough adjustments to get them back within this five-point deficit? We shall see. They've come back down from eight already. Using, uh, I believe, a 10-2 run to close out that first quarter. So we know they can do it. The uh, Devils up 5-5. Five, five. Corbill called the timeout. We'll tell you. You are not a number of credit score community first bank of the Heartland. You're a person or business of needs. Since you're the good and the bad community first bank of the Heartland, will stand by you. 408 to go in the first half. SBW on top, 21-16. Bill has the basketball. With it to the left is Jessica Wright off the ball screen. Now throws top to Odin. Underneath pass going away. They're looking for Ilo from Odin to Webb. And Pitchford stepped in front. She gets it to Miller. Right wing to Garner. Garner on a dribble. Left skip pass to SQ near the left elbow. Top the key to Miller. Miller's going to run the point with Lappin on the bench with those fouls. Garner with it on the right wing. Comes to the top of the key. Holds above her head. Left side Miller. 16 footer. No good off the mark. Rebound goes to Odom. For Goreville. She'll get it out to Shady. She'll bring it across the timeline. Tip pass. Tip goes across. She'll bring it in the front court trap near the timeline. Stolen away. Garner. Garner has it. Throws it. Tip stolen away. Here comes Goreville. That pass right tip. Webb has it near the timeline. Has to throw it left wing to Sullivan. Sullivan will set the offense. She'll spin around. And there's a push foul. Wow, that was a tight call. That's a nice fifth foul on SBW as Maddie Garner will pick up her first. It is a foul play first half, and I think the officials know the extent of the rivalry, Chris. They're not letting things get out of the way. No, they're trying to keep things for control and going a little tighter than what I think what we kind of expected coming in, but you give Goreville a chance to line where they've been solid tonight, and of course, as soon as I say that, they've missed a free throw, but well, you take a look at what, what they've been able to accomplish in line. That is what has kept them in this ballgame. One more free throw coming up for Sullivan. Remember to stay tuned for the Renlake College Halftime Show. Scoring and stats from this one. Second free throw is good. We're probably going to be light on scores tonight with the early start of this one as it's only 10 till 8, but we'll get as many as we can, hopefully. SQ with it on the left wing. Top of the key to Pitchford, right wing to Miller. 
Miller will come back against the man to man. The Gardner on the left side, one dribble, now picks up, throws it to Miller, Chastley Key. Miller out near the timeline with under three to go. SVW leads 21 17. Eskew has it, holding it above her head on the left wing. Will look, goes top to key to pitch, Fern over on the right side to Miller through her hands, has to recover near the sideline. Miller to the top of the key, goes left wing to Garner, inside Pittsburgh, catch, jump shot, good. Pittsburgh made a great catch, Webb Campbell's got beat, and it's 23-17. Down the lane, shot glass, no good from Sullivan, shifts around, shifts around, Webb puts it on the board, glass, no good for the foul. Goreville strapping, I think, you know, here's the thing about Goreville, because that foul is on Eskew, her first, the over the team foul for the Lady Devils. Goreville doesn't have their A game tonight, but they're scrapping away to stay in this one, a sign of a true championship team. Well, it is. You look at a championship player like Allison Webb, she's over from the floor tonight. She's perfect from the free throw line. So she's made the best of every chance she's had to get to the line now, 7-7. Seven seven. But helping keep this team in this game, and you take a look at some of the things that haven't gone SBW's way. We take a look at that last play. That one looked bad from start to finish, all the way up until the ball went in. It looked like a heck of a play. Webb made the first, missed the second, and it wasn't going to count anyway as the Lady Black Cat stepped into the lane too early. 23-18. You've got to give some credit to the student section from Central Miller High School across the way. It's jammed in the Red Devils' den. Well, they could be a heck of an impact right now. It's going to change whenever Goreville comes the opposite way in the second half, but for now they can wreak havoc in this ballgame while they're shooting free throws. And across the timeline comes Miller. She's going to go to the right around a ball screen down the lane. She comes, lay him no good, but a foul. <clears throat> Well-designed quick hitter for Miller. She got to the rim. Something that the Lady Devil Sharks can do that we haven't seen a lot of this season from some other teams is they are strong enough that when they are going to the hoop and they draw the contact and their arm is being brought back, they are strong enough to get their arm back up to get the shot off to get themselves to the line. Miller hits another. She has seven and a quarter, 11 in the game, 24-18. SVW on top. The aforementioned scoreboard updates that will be coming. Auto insurance is complex. State Farm agent Scott Owens makes it simple with friendly advice. You need the right level of protection and getting all the discounts. You should call 242-3770 to get to a better state. They sponsor scoreboard update. Miller hits them both. It's 25-18, Devils by seven. They've extended the lead. Top of the key, Webb. Gets it on the right wing. The Shady over on the left side to right. Right down the lane. Kicks it left wing to Sullivan. Down the lane. Shot good. That'll stop a little bit of the bleeding. And now we got a player down. Miller is down for SV. She gets back up. Came down on ankle. I think she jumped in the air. She kind of tweaked it a little bit. I don't see her going out of the game. And she's going to stay in with a minute 50 to go in the first half. SBW up five. Timeout, Rick Metcalf. It's going to be like an NBA timeout, Chris. You've got a guy that's down. You don't want to take him out if you call 30. Well, you burned a 30 here. and I mean, you haven't burned any timeouts yet, so it's a great opportunity to give Chelsea Miller a little bit of time. You described it perfectly with the NBA timeout. Not enough time to help Rajon, Rajon Rondo, though, with that torn ACL. Nope. Of course, that's here nor there in this particular game. Five-point game right now. It's minute 47 to go in the half. Lady Devils doing a, quiet, a great job of containing right now. With Ray Lappin on the bench with two fouls. You take a look at the other foul trouble around the team right now, plugging them. Williams is back in the game. They played some extended time without her, and they played some extended time on and off with some of their other stars. They're doing a pretty good job here. Miller's off the ball after the timeout. Garner's going to handle it now for the Lady Devils, who lead by five. They're going to go after Miller. They get it top of the key, stolen away. Webb on the field. She's got three or four steals, and she leaves it for Sullivan. Right side to right. Right crossover baseline move. Nice play to Odom. Layup good. Oh, what a nice play. Norvell works the little two-man game. It's 25-22. Miller limps across the timeline, though she can move a little bit. She's probably faster than most people here, only on one leg. Pittsburgh, the Garner has it to Williams. Now on top of the key, Miller passes across. Tips and stolen away. Bad passing by the Lady Devils on the last two trips. Across the timeline with it is Sullivan. Goes to the right side. Inside pass. Odom block glass. Good. Boy, yeah, Gorville has hung around. Ray Lappin on the bench with three fouls. You count also Pittsburgh with two and Marlowe with two. And how SBW leads by one is beyond us. Garner on the right side in the corner to SQ. 17-footer off the mark. Rebound goes to Webb. Gorville looking for only their second lead of the night. Across the timeline, left side. That goes to Sullivan. 
She recovers on the left wing, gets it out to half of the key to right. Right with it, holds, throws it left wing to Sullivan. Three on the way for the lead score. This Scoreville team has shown its experience in big games on the Dirt Diamonds, and the Hardwood Floors are up by two at 24 seconds to go. Across the timeline, Miller goes right side to Garner in the corner to Eskew. Eskew out top of the key to Garner. Now left wing, three on the way. Miller's off the mark rebound. Eskew shot blocked and a foul. Megan Eskew will go to the line to shoot two. Wasn't much contact there from our vantage point, but Eskew has earned a trip to the free throw line with a third foul on Odom. The only thing I could sense was that maybe the tail defender might have gotten a hand in there at the last possible second, but there was more contact on the three, and that was entirely with the basketball. Eskew shot, and good. First free throw is in. If this was a soap for a lot of your main characters are in some trouble. Haley Darnell and Taylor Odom at three fouls apiece for Goreville. Ray Lappin has three pitch for two and Marlowe two for the Lady Devils in this one-point game. Eskew will try to make the second and does, and we're tied at 27 with 10 seconds to go. SVW will pressure. Sullivan has it, goes right side to Pritchett. She's back in the game after having a little nick up in the leg. Right side, right block, right. Turnaround jumper is up and no good. Into the first half, just like where we started at the tie. SVW 27, Fourville 27. We'll take a break, come back with the Red Lake College Halftime Show. You're listening to SVW Lady Devils Basketball on the showcase on WMIX. I'm Evie Brown with Dave Bowers. We'll look at your next rad weather. Breezy and warm tonight with a shower on a couple of occasions, a low of 56. Tomorrow, cloudy, breezy, warm, a couple of showers. I near the record of 70 set in 2002. Tomorrow night, periods of rain and a heavy to severe thunderstorm. Breezy and mild, although 45 to 49. And then on Wednesday, it's breezy and turning colder with clouds and a stray shower. Temperatures will wind up in the low 40s. Next rad weather from WMIX, Mount Vernon, Illinois. What is good sports talk, really? Around these parts, it's the WMIX Saturday Sports Show. Every Saturday morning after the 8 o'clock news. With a vast assortment of interviews and knowledgeable in-studio discussion, it's the most content-driven local sports show on the radio dial. And it's every Saturday morning after the 8 o'clock news, only on AM 940 and WMIXsports.com, where you can listen on your computer, smartphone, or any device. It's all made possible by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what healthcare should be. What do you look for in a full-size pickup? Hi, Roy Schmidt, Ford dealer, Ford Square, Mount Vernon. Here are some hard facts. The 2013 Ford F-150 can tow a heavier trailer and haul more cargo than any of its competitors, and it's engineered and tested to withstand more punishment. The F-150 is built Ford Tough to come through with the capability you expect in this full-size pickup from Ford day in and day out. Right now, you can save $4,500 on a 2013 Ford F-150 Crew Cab 4x4 with the new EcoBoost engine when you finance through Ford Motor Credit. That includes three payments on us. Come see any of our sales associates today and drive away in a Ford F-Series or any vehicle at Ford Square Mount Vernon, 1501 Broadway in Mount Vernon, Illinois, or log on to FordSquare.com. In this fast-paced world, wouldn't it be nice to simplify things? At People's National Bank, we have. You can have a free checking account with a Visa check card, online banking with bill pay, direct deposit, mobile banking, and receive your statements online. Call me, Susan Sahaki, at People's National Bank in Mount Vernon today and get the products and services you deserve. People's National Bank, serving Southern Illinois since 1909. Member FDIC, non-usage fees may apply. Your future is calling. With a GED test and some help from Ren Lake College, you can answer the call. The current test expires at the end of 2013 and your scores will expire too if you don't finish and pass the test by then. Don't feel prepared? Don't worry, we can help. Visit finishtheged.com to learn more. Don't miss the chance to turn one small step into your next big opportunity, like college, a better job, and the respect you deserve. Finish your GED by the end of 2013. Questions? Call Ren Lake College's Adult Education and Literacy Department today at 437 53 321. This is the showcase on WMIX, the Red Lake College halftime show. Starts now. Red Lake College can save you thousands on your education. Visit your virtual counselor at rlc.edu. See which of more than 100 degree certificate programs is right for you. Halftime at SV. 
It's the Lady Devils 27, Scoreville 27. We need to take a break. We'll come back with scoring and stats from the first half. You're listening to SBW Lady Devils Basketball in a showcase on WMIX. There's still time to save at Newell Furniture in the General Store in Woodlawn. Newell Furniture's store-wide cleanup sale is still in progress with drastic furniture markdowns and extra cash discounts. Save on all Lazy Boy reclining furniture, sofas, holiday, TV consoles, bedrooms, dining rooms, ceiling bedding, and more. Plus, save 75% off all Christmas items, 50% off select merchandise at the general store. Newell's in Woodlawn, cleaning up to save you more. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency... Call 911. For more scores and insight, follow us on Twitter at WMIX Sports. Now, back to the showcase on WMIX. Halftime at SB. It is SBW 27, Goreville 27 on Red Lake College Halftime Show. At Red Lake College, you can get a quality education to, and save thousands. Log on to rlc.edu to switch programs. It is right for you. Danny Zawinski, Chris Hugo alongside in this has been everything it has been built up to be. 16 minutes in the book. We're all knotted up. I'll turn it over to Chris Hugo from scoring and stats for this first half. Well, taking a look, of course, at your team shooting first of all. For the SPW Lady Devils, they were 8 of 22 for that first half for 36%. 1 of 4 from the outside for 25%. That makes it 9 of 26 from the floor for 34.6%. For the Lady Black Cats, they were 4 of 22 from the inside for 18.2%. 3 of 8 outside for 37.5%. They were just 7 of 30 for the floor for 23.3%. Free throw shooting has been a difference in this ball game. For the Lady Devils, they were 8 of 11 for 72.7%. Log Goreville was 10 of 14 for 71.4% after a perfect 6 of 6 in the first quarter. Rebounding edge, really not much of one. Goreville has 14 rebounds, 7 on each side of the glass, while the Lady Devils have 13. Nine of those of the defensive variety. No turnover disadvantage. This one all even at 7 turnovers apiece. Both teams also have five in the book. First for Goreville, they are led by Allison Sullivan's team high nine. Seven from Allison Webb. Five from Taylor Oates. Four from Jessica Wright. Two from Haley Darnell to give them their 27. While for the Lady Devils, they have five in the book, as we said. Game high 11 from Chelsea Miller. Ray Lavin has nine. Three from Megan Eskew and two each from Michaela Williams and Cheyenne Pitch for tonight to give us our halftime score of the Sets of Lear Waltonville Lady Devils 27. Goreville Black Cat 27. We have all kinds of people listening in from S. That's for Valera, Walt Bill, as well as Goreville. Thanks for listening. Love chatting with you too on Facebook, facebook.com slash WMI Exports. Been chatting with a few people there. Also on Twitter at WMI Exports. Thanks for chatting with us and following us there as well. We enjoy talking to everybody. We, Chris Hugo and I, Danny Swinsky, are happy to be here bringing this game to you. Halftime tied at 27. This has been the Red Lake College Halftime Show. Red Lake College offers over 100 degrees certificate programs for thousands less. Log on to rlc.edu to see how you can save thousands. Let's take a break and come back. Tied at 27. Who will win this? Stay tuned with us here at WMIX. We will broadcast the final outcome for you here. You're listening to SVW Lady Devils Basketball in a showcase on WMIX. Do you farm or operate an agriculture-based business? Then Community First Bank is for you. Hi, I'm Steve Down, Agribusiness Lending Officer at Community First Bank. With our roots firmly planted in Jefferson County, we offer the stability, strength, and personal attention that you deserve. Community First Bank wants to be your financial partner with customized products for both your personal and farm banking needs. Stop by any of our five convenient Jefferson County locations to see how we can help your business grow. Community First Bank with locations in Mount Vernon, Woodlawn, Dix, and Ina. Member FDIC, Equal Housing. Talk to your neighbors, then talk to State Farm Agent Scott Owens. See why State Farm insures more drivers than GEICO and Progressive combined. Great service plus discounts. State Farm wants to get you all available discounts. That's why we apply the savings automatically during your quote. Want confirmation that you're getting all the discounts that you're eligible for? There's a State Farm agent right here in Jefferson County who's always happy to help. See Scott Owens in Mount Vernon or call 242-3770. 
We're worldwide. This is the showcase on WMIX and WMIXSports.com. Presented by Community First Bank. 27 all. A couple of pit bulls going at it here tonight in their high school basketball. On the girls' side in Southern Illinois, Danny Sorwinski and Trish Hugo alongside. And two minutes to go. We've been told we have to answer the question on Twitter at WMIX Sports. Um, uh, some fans and some listeners tweeting in different questions to us on Twitter. Follow us and chime in at WMI Sports We're on Twitter. And back to this one here. Foul trouble is going to play a factor in this. There's going to be some attrition. It's going to be a matter of who can withstand that foul trouble and go from there, I think. And number two, who's going to make the big shot down the stretch? Well, that's exactly what the key to the rest of this game is going to be. And you take a look at the foul trouble early. Ray Lappin. Had a game high eight in the first quarter, then had to sit much of the second after picking up her third foul on the offensive end. A difference in this one. We we talked about what SBW be able to contain the rest of that second half without her, and we look at that 446, 448 mark, whatever it was exactly that Lappin had to come out, Danny, and we said, would that be a turning point in this game? We look at that stretch, it allowed it to become tied once again. It was a four or five point lead at that point for the Lady Devils. Weren't able to contain it the rest of the half, but now you're tied at 27. You did not give up the lead for long in that second quarter. Now it's a chance to try to get back out there and get up on top. I assume that maybe you go back with the starters here to start the half, even with some in foul trouble, and you try to see what you can do, even if that time is only limited with your girls in foul trouble. And girls in foul, we're being pressured into an answer on Twitter. We It's an answer, split decision. Yes, but split decision was good enough for that crew. we got all kinds of things going on on Twitter at WMI Sports. We're also on the World Wide Web, WMIXports.com. We have scores and schedules. We have archives of both audio and video games that we do, as well as our running live Twitter feed. You don't even have to be on Twitter. Go to WMIXports.com. Anything we tweet goes there. All our scores that we tweet go there as well live, right when we have them. We have a scoreboard update every night. All nice and neat and organized as well. Tied at 27, we get ready to start the second half. Goreville and SBW. For the Lady Devils, a different start. Garner, Eskew, Miller, Williams, and Marlowe is laughing and will not start the second half. She of three fouls. Goreville with a basketball. Darnell with it left wing to Webb. They're not going starters either. Inside pass off of Webb out of bounds. And here's the thing, Danny. You kept, I mean, you kept your lead for the longest time that second quarter. You're tied going into the half, but you come back out. You're able to give some girls some valuable varsity experience. Your future for next year played the bulk of that second quarter, so they didn't play too bad. Give them a chance. SBW has it. Marlowe down the lane, glass up, and no good. Rebound back to Marlowe. She scores. Precisely what she needed, Danny. She missed the first shot. She came off the turnaround top of the key, worked down the middle of the paint, got her own rebound up and in, her first point. He got that. Gorgo quickly. Webb up and in after the putback. Allison Webb working hard underneath. We're tied at 29. That's a big field goal for her, her first field goal tonight. Oh, yeah. Left wing Williams with it. Back out top, fifth round. SQ on the floor. Jump ball. That'll go to... SVW. You're not a number of credit score community first bank in Hardland. You're a person in business with needs and through the good and the bad community first bank in Hardland will stand by you. All kinds of people here tonight watching this one with interest in the game, not with just the team. Here it comes on the left wing, SQ in the quarter to Williams. Yeah, you read the same thing I did. Williams with it on the dribble. Twitter is rocking tonight with all kinds of fans and people listening. Williams goes top of the key to Miller. Miller with it over on the left side to Williams, and Williams will leave it for Miller, and they'll start the offense again. Facebook.com slash WMIX Sports. We appreciate those from Goreville and SVW talking and chatting with us and liking us as well. Miller down the lane, shot block from behind. By right, it's rebounded by Darnell. She brings it in the front court and got away from her, got too much air in the basketball to bounce away. Laffin will come in for somebody. For Miller. Miller will come out. All stars and stitches. If you need a T-shirt, a hoodie, or Letterman's jacket, or any type of apparel for your school organization or business, see Big Dave at All Stars and Stitches just west of Fenton High School. Call 435-5555. <laughs> with it on the right wing, <laughs> with it in the corner to Lappin. Lappin down the lane, loose the triple, stolen away, ball on the floor. Darnell has it for Goreville. She'll throw it up. Here comes the Lady Blackheads, two on one, left side pass. Sullivan down the lane, glass good. 
Orville worked that to perfection. It's 31-29. Lady Black Cats on top. Good balls and a better footwork that side by Sullivan. Able to catch it off a dead stop. Turned on a dime. Went inside and got the bucket. Looked great. Lappin comes down the lane. On the dribble. Shot no good. Blocked from behind. Rebound goes to Webb. Orville starting to dominate a little bit on the inside. Quickly up to the way. Darnell down the lane. Glass good. And a foul. Nope. What do we got? Late whistle. What do we have? Wayne Whistle, let's see what we have. One shot. So they're going to count the basket. Darnell drove in. It was a blocking foul. That one's on Mar- Marlowe, her third. That's big either way. And Corville has their biggest lead of the game at 33-29. And Rick Metcalf wants a timeout. That's a huge call in the grand scheme of things for our points. Fouls and momentum going over here to Gorville. Well, it is. And if you take a look at that, what actually happened is Rachel Marlowe got tangled up in the pile. <laughs> That was developing there in the paint. Kind of got between the legs of the shooter. And that's kind of a foul that you can't miss. They have to call it. They do. It's a late call, but it's still the right call. And you give Gorville a great chance to line for Dan one and a three point play to extend the lead to five. It'd be their largest of the night. But further extends the momentum here at the 553 mark back to the way of the black uniform. Back to the way of the black uniforms. We'll pick a Crossroads Community Hospital player of the game when this one is over. Crossroads Community Hospital's emergency department plays as you'll be seen by a physician within 30 minutes of your arrival. One more free throw coming for Haley Darnell. To remind you, the WMI Sports Mobile Studios are by Fort Square and King City Chrysler. Darnell at the line to try to complete the three-point play. Shot up and in. We'll have the scoreboard update. The scores are starting to roll in. Next available opportunity. We'll give you some from around southern Illinois. Miller across the timeline for the Lady Devils. Left side to Eskew. Holds above her head. Man-to-man for Goreville. Eskew still holding top of the key pass. Marlowe gets around left to the left elbow. Cut off, though, on the health defense. She gets it to Miller to lap in left wing. Three ball on the way. Good. Three goggles go up for Ray Lappin, and they're back to within two, 34-32. Top of the key, right side now for right. Three on the way. Mill Lappin boxed out. Almost got a foul. Shot no good. Rebound Garner on the weak side. Garner goes left side to Eskew. Standing on the three-point line, the Miller out near the volleyball line. She'll dribble to between the circles and throw it left wing to Eskew. Eskew top of the key. Left missed the pass. Marlow 15-footer. Good. Big crowd across the way from SVW, and it's tied at 34. You heard that roar of approval in the background. Corville has the basketball web inside. Law falls to the floor. Tip stolen away. Jump ball. It'll go to Goreville on the inbounds underneath. End of one. McLeansboro, Hamilton County leads Star by 16 to 12. And CHBC leads Brownstown, St. Emil, 1915 at half. Both girls score. Wow. Goreville quickly. Allison Webb, three on the way. No good off the mark. Lapping has the rebound. She'll corral and bring it up into the front court for the Lady Devil. Into the corner to Garner. Skip pass left wing to Marlowe. 17-footer for the lead. Good. She has found her confidence. She found that inside play to start the half, and now it's perfect for the field here in the third quarter. Corville, 15-footer right by Pritchett. Is good. Oh. Boy, what an answer. Look at that. Hello. Tied to 36. Regulation may not be enough. Miller bringing it across the timeline for the Lady Devil. That scoreboard update, haven't forgot it, brought to you by Scott Owens and State Farm Insurance. Give them a call, 242-3770. To get to a better state. Lady Devils trying to get to the lead. SQ misses 15 footer. Rebound goes to Goreville. Darnell across the timeline. Two on two. Charge down the lane. That's got to be a charge. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> Miller picks up her second. Second on the Lady Devils. It is a blocking foul, much to what disagreed with Chris and I thought. We've had only one technical player control foul tonight. Not technical foul, but. Technically, literally, a player control foul tonight. Now it's just the Ray Lappin bulldoze, uh, the back of bulldoze. I mean, uh, everything else has been a block. That one probably could have been a charge, but free throw's good. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we think. Right. right. 736. Thank you, Carol F. <laughs> exactly. And they're the ones that charge this game. They're doing a great That's job. All right. WMI Sports Mobile Studios, driven by Ford Square and King City Chrysler. Second free throw's no good. Corville by one. Marlow has a rebound from the Lady Devils. Throws it up to Lappin. He'll bring it into the front court. Ray down the floor, down the lane, layup good. There is something about Ray laughing off the dribble, and she is running into that lane. She just looks like a bull coming at you. She often splits like the Red Sea. Laughing goes to the left. She gets the layup. Sullivan has it for the Black, Black Cats. Leads it out front for right. Free throw line. Layoffs it in for Webb. Layup good. Oh, that's a nice play. Throw it up. Let Webb go get it. Tallest player on the floor. It's 39-38. Lady Black Cats by one. 
Lady Devils going the other way. Marlo Webb, good. They went right at Webb, who didn't get back after making the shot, 40-39. Great play by Marlo, now has eight in the quarter. Three on the way for Goreville for the lead, and it's good. As, as Bridget knocks down a three, she has five in the quarter, 42-40. This, a two heavyweights throwing big hooks. Miller goes to the right. Top the key pass to SQ, left wing to Lappin. Lappin will go around the dribble to SQ. Right corner pass, Marlowe. Webb comes out and get her. Marlowe goes around a Webb hand check. First foul on Webb. First on Goraville of the half. Let's to the Bronx cheer across the way from the Lady Devils crowd. Ty are inbounds underneath the Lady Devils basket. While they get people in, we'll tell you. With locations tonight at Dixwood Lawn and two in Mount Vernon. Community First Bank at the Heartland. Proud to be the official voice of the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase. Eskew will trigger. Two on the block, two in the corner for the Lady Devil. Eskew to Marlow in the corner. Got away from Webb. Dribbles into the paint. Stolen away. Here comes Goreville. Right down the lane. Around Lappin. Layup. No good. Webb rebounds. Follows. No good. Ball to the floor. Over the back. Yep. First yeah. ball. Vertical is broken again. Webb, who went the entire game so far without two fouls, has two in the last 15 seconds. They knew it was going to come eventually. She kept going up, kept going up. Then finally drew contact on the third try for the offensive rebound. And now gives SB a chance to try to take the lead on this possession. Here comes SBW. They could, as Chris Peck, tired, take the lead. Here come the Lady Devils. Miller right side to Garner. Garner dribbles to SQ top of the key. They're going into Marlowe, working on Webb. Shot blocked by Webb. Rebound SQ over to Webb. No good. Rebound comes to Kayla Webb. She's on the floor foul. Marlowe, that's huge. That's four. Yep. That's the third on SVW. In the game, in, 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 in the half. 225 to go. SVW down by two. 42 40. SVW's going to pressure. Here comes that press. A little zone pressure. One, two, two. Goreville bringing across the timeline. With it now is Wright. Gets it into the front court to Webb on the right wing. Webb has it. And she'll look. Right side goes to Wright on the dribble. Down the lane. Blocked Williams. Ball to the floor. Webb knocked down Miller. She rolled her ankle. Ball goes to the left side out of bounds off SBW. And it'll be Goreville basketball. Miller is up walking off. She's had one ankle roll tweaked. Another one got rolled up on. Miller's going to have to go out. You'll see Mariah Miller come in for Chelsea Miller. Nope. Miller's staying in. Marlowe comes out. Miller won it out. And SQ will come in now for Chelsea Miller. She is taking a beating on her ankle. Two minutes to go in the third. Goreville up 42-40. Side out of bounds for Goreville. I can see some pressure coming here from SVW. They're going to go now. They got it. Yep, the travel. There it was. You can see, I can see the call from Coach Metcalf. Knew what it was, and the turnover force, and SVW has the basketball. Well, uh, and now you have all this, this drama that kind of unfolded here just a moment ago. You kind of put it in red. You have the ball right back with a minute 54 to go in the quarter. Still another chance to tie or take this lead. Garner to Lappin, the SQ left wing. Get pass right to Garner, top of the key. Lappin, who thought about darting down the lane, couldn't get there. Garner on the right wing into Williams. Shot fake. Got Odom in the air. Stolen away. A nice play by Wright. She comes the other way. Left-hand layup around Lapley. Good in the foul. That's trouble. Not only does Wright get the two-point play, chance for three. That's the fourth foul on Ray Lapley. Not smart. Sometimes you have to let defenders go and just give that and not get your fourth foul. Well, you give Ray Lapley a lot of credit, Danny, for trying to defend the play. But unfortunately, if you're not going to take the contact and fall backward, don't turn with your hands held alone. But stick your hands up and just kind of let the defender go by. Avoid the foul. Yes, you're, you're giving up the two points. You're down two possessions at that point. The defender being down four, the down five, and with four foul. Facebook.com slash WMI Sports. We mentioned it tonight. We've got a lot of people chatting with us on there, following us. We put new content on up at half. We'll put some more on later as well. Here comes the try to three-point play. Right missed the free throw. Rebound in the corner. We go to Pritchett. And Gorville reset the offense. Kayla Webb out front. Top of the key with a minute 29 to go in the third. Goreville by four. Left wing, left corner to Odom. Odom now dribbles out. Now throws the right side to Pritchett. Three on the way from Pritchett is good. What a big turn of events. Pritchett has eight in the quarter. And it's 47-40. 
Doraville by seven, their biggest lead of the game. And how big is that now? They get the offensive rebound off of the foul shot, and now they're up seven. Lappin has it in the corner with four fouls. The crowd across the way that's big for SBW is quiet. Miller lob pass Pitchford underneath, up and in. Nice play. What an assist, 47-42. That stops the bleeding somewhat for the Lady Devil. Across the timeline comes Kayla Webb. Webb has it on the dribble, leaves it out to Darnell. Darnell has it. Now we'll leave it on the dribble handoff to right. Right at the free throw line. Goes on the left wing to Darnell. Darnell between the circles down the lane. Running layup too strong. Foul. And Darnell will go line to shoot two. And Gorgos made some hay getting the line and drawing some foul. Yeah, but look at where that play started here on the left wing. How great was the left-handed dribbling that time by Jessica Wright. Switched right. Was able to get the pass off. And then kind of took some of the defense with her to open up that lane. For Haley Darnell, it's he's off to the free throw line as well. Now well, she'll go back to the free throw line. Lady Devils with five fouls. First free throw, no good. She'll get another. 47-40. WMIsports.com, our website. We have all kinds. We have schedules and scores. We have archives of both our audio and video games that we do. We also have a scoreboard up later on in the night. Each and every night there are games. And our Twitter feed runs live on the page. You don't even have to be on Twitter. Our tweets immediately go there which includes scores that show up immediately. Devils on the missed free throw with the rebound, lapping down the lane with those four fouls. Shot no good, but she'll go to the line. Chris, every time lapping goes around contact with those four fouls, you just have to hold your breath and hope it's not her fifth. Well, exactly. I think you kind of you kind of get a little tight in the seat, and you kind of hope that she's not going to go out there and get an offensive foul. But she's done a great job when she's gotten down low tonight. Now is a chance to the line to try to get the Devils back within a possession. Free throw by Lappin is good. 12, 14, 15 now. I can do that math. 47, 43. She'll get another. FU is out. Daisy Edmondson in as Rick Metcalf goes down that bench. He's trying to get some extra time at the end of the quarter, some extra minutes to rest. Second free throw, Lappin is good. 47-44. It's Williams, Lappin, Edmondson, Miller, and Pitchford for the Lady Devils. Scoreville across the timeline. Kayla Webb has it on the dribble on the left wing. She goes around the ball screen to the left corner. Throws it inside. The right posted up. Gets it back to West. Top of the key to Darnell with six seconds. Darnell with it to the wing. Holds, looks. Inside pass goes Odom at the horn. Rebound to SBW. Three quarters in the book. It's Scoreville 47, Lady Devils 44. Back for the fourth. You're listening to SBW Lady Devils Basketball in the Showcase on WMIX. A coach house garage is money well spent. On craftsmanship that's sure to get compliments. Don't cut corners on your garage. It adds value to your home. That's why you need to see the professionals at Coach House Garages. Choose from a variety of Coach House Garage designs or they'll build one to your design. For a dealer near you, check the yellow pages in Mount Vernon or go online to coachhousegarages.com. More than just a garage. More than just a garage. It's a Coach House when an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency... Call 911. Back out to the WMIX Sports Mobile Studios on WMIX at WMIXSports.com. This is the Showcase, presented by Community First Bank. Danny Strawinski, Chris, you go alongside. We begin the fourth quarter. Lady Devils down three, 47-44 to Goreville. But SVW has the basketball pitch for a top the key near the center circle. With it left wing, pass tip. Miller has it back, stolen foul. Reach in foul on Goreville, their fourth of the half. SPW will have it underneath their own basket. That foul was on Sullivan, her second team fourth. Community First Bank with four Jefferson County locations and anyone else. Most of the own decisions made here. Proud supporters of Jefferson County. Top of the key, Miller has the basketball to Lappin on the right wing. Lappin with four fouls in the ball game. Marlowe has four. She's not played in a while. Williams with it, top of the key. 7.30 to go in this one. SVW 
Down by three. Williams throws it to Pitchford on the right sideline. Throws it back to Miller between the circles. Left wing to Laffin. Laffin now to Miller. And Miller will go to Williams deep left wing. As we play along here, SBW trying to draw Eric Goreville away from the rim. Williams goes right side to Laffin. Laffin will go right left corner to Miller. Shot from 10. Rolls over the iron. No good. Rebound Darnell. Good lick. Just didn't drop. Here comes SBW. Or Goreville. Down to the right block, goes Sullivan, shot tip, stolen foul, Goreville. That'll be their fifth, and on the turnover, that foul is on Sullivan, her third. Community, I should say, Crossroads Community Hospital sponsors the player of the game when this one is over. Crossroads Community Hospital's emergency department pledges to be seen by physician within 30 minutes of your arrival. Seven minutes to go in this one, SVW on top, or trails, I should say, 47-44. Miller between the circles and gets this man-to-man from Goreville. SVW not been able to get a good shot here in this quarter. Miller picks up the dribble. Deep right wing, left side to Pitchford. Left elbow. Extended now behind the line. Now gets the top of the key to Lappin. Lappin crosses over, goes to the rim. Down the lane, layup. No good, too strong. Rebound Odin. She gets it out to right across the timeline. It's two on one. Bounce pass left side. Sullivan shot blocked by Miller. What a play by Chelsea Miller. She runs the other way, and there's a foul. Boy, that's a great one-on-one effort there to block the shot to go the other way. Well, just when you think Sullivan's going to extend the lead to five, going around the defense and get the clean shot up. There's Chelsea Miller out of nowhere to swat it away and grab the rebound. And here's the sideline out of bounds. Williams, S. Q. Miller. That's Mariah Miller with Chelsea Miller laughing. Here's an inbound. SQ holds above her head. SQ throws in the corner now to Laffin. Laffin will shoot a three. It's no good off the mark. Rebound to Webb for Goreville. Allison Webb gets it and leaves it off for Darnell. She gets in the left wing to Pritchett. Top the key. Webb for a three. This would be a huge one. It's missed. No good. Rebound goes to SQ for SBW. She will skip it across over to the left right side to Miller in the corner to Pitchford. Pitchford with it. Has it stolen away, and Goreville has another lost possession for the Lady Devils. Goreville the other way on the right side to Pritchett. Pritchett there is in then. Now Mike Hilton wants a timeout. He was wanting a timeout. Good time to take a timeout, Danny. Both these teams are all free for the field, both with three of the defensive rebounds. Neither team able to box out and get their own board, but it's a miracle for both teams. The other team hasn't either gone on top or extended their lead, but you kind of take a look. Everybody's fortunate shots right now. Taking that unnecessary three. Scoreboard update. High school boys basketball. Weber Township over Sandoval, 28-23. Midland Trail action there. That scoreboard update brought to you by Scott Owens and State Farm Insurance. It's a jungle out there in auto insurance. State Farm agent Scott Owens makes it simple with friendly advice. Give him a call at 242-3770 to get to a better state. Atmosphere's rocking. The Lady Devils crowd's been quiet for a while. Music's trying to get him back into it. Gorbill with a basketball after the timeout. Here comes Jessica Wright. Holds to the left wing. Fifth pass thrown to the right side to Pritchett. Down the lane she comes. Five short, no good. Rebound Marlowe. Marlowe dribbles out of the pack. She'll bring it into the front court up the right side. Goes in the right corner to Pitchford. Back to Marlowe on that right wing. Top of the key to Miller. Miller goes left baseline to Lappin. Shot, no good, and a foul. Miller, uh, Lappin goes to the floor and hits her head hard. She is wobbling, gets up with the help of some of her friends. Webb picks up her third. That is the seventh. So big point there, Chris. SBW shoot free throws the rest of the way. For Scoreville, not far behind the free throw department. SBW with five fouls. But the important thing there is that Allison Webb picks up her third all of it in the second half. Lappin will shoot two. First free throw is up, and no good. She'll get another. Saturday sports show every Saturday morning from 8.08 a.m. to 10 a.m. on AM 940, as well as at WMIXports.com online. Guest talk scores at WMIXports social media question of the week as Lappin gets one out of two after landing hard on the floor. 47-45, Goreville by two with a basketball. Top of the key right, picks up her dribble, leaves it for Taylor or Allison Webb, top of the key. Webb will pick and look and leaves it off behind her for Sullivan. She dribbles to the right side against the Lady Devils, man-to-man. Backdoor, backdoor pass. That was off the hands of the Lady Devils, and Pritchett out of bounds to SVW. Good call by the official off the baseline, Danny. Lappin got her hand on it, but just as soon as Lappin did, 
Bridges thought about saving it, but did not commit. Turns the ball over. Could be a huge turnover for Goreville. And Lyme Miller will bring it across the timeline. Here comes timeout Rick Metcalf. He's going to do some X and O's here in this timeout. 4.55 left to go. 47-45. Goreville on top by two. We're at the bottom of the hour. Let's pause for station identification here on the showcase. Find WMIX Sports on Facebook. This is 50,000 watts of the showcase on WMIX FM, Mount Vernon, Marion, Effingham. A free service from Withers Broadcasting. Facebook.com slash WMIX Sports. Give us a like there. We put content on there all the time, wherever we're at, whatever's going on. We'll give you new stuff. We're chatting with some of our Facebook followers tonight as well during this game, which is what we do a lot. We're also on Twitter at WMIX Sports. 4.55 to go in this one. Gorville up 47 45. Denny Zrowinski, Chris Hugo alongside, and this has built up to everything it's got to be, and it might be some extra basketball for Lucky. Well, last time I believe we did this game from this location, that's exactly what we got. It, it, it has been everything that it was advertised for thus far through the first three quarters, and now through the first three minutes and five seconds of this fourth quarter, we've had a, a 1 0 ball game here in quarter number four. There's 47 44 Goreville after three. We've had just the long free throw. From Ray Lab, and both teams ice cold to the field right now. Good timeout by Rick Metcalf. Big spin game adjustments here. He's one of the best at doing so, and and you know give him credit. They waited until he crossed the timeline, put together a half court set. Let's see what they do. SQ throws it left, the lap in the lane, charges down the lane, missed the shot, goes up, missed it, rebound to the floor, bodies everywhere, more bodies everywhere. Gordonville has it on the recovery. Wright gets it to Sullivan into the front court. All oh, this means a lot to both teams. Jerseys and bodies on the floor, hustling. Richard leaves it off for right at the top of the key. Backdoor cutter to Sullivan. Down the lane, left good. Boy, what a gritty, gutsy Goreville team. 49-45 on first there. SQ Curtis and Miller lost it out of bounds. It'll be Goreville ball again. You're not a number of credit score. Community First Bank of the Heartland. You're first for business with me. And through the good and the bad, Community First Bank of the Heartland will stand by you. Goreville with a basketball up four. 424 to go. Right between the circle. Down the lane, pass with a pick and roll, left, travel to basketball. Couldn't quite corral the dribble, and well, traveled with it as well. That's some issues, but I think the Devils, Danny, are still reeling from that lab and play out of the timeout. She went hard into two defenders on the shot, thinking that she gets a foul call on one or the other. Didn't happen, and still I think somewhat in shock our Lady Devils from that non call. Lady Devils to get back in the one possession. Miller with a basketball between the circle. Dribbles to the left, will survey this man to man from Goreville. Miller still on the dribble, picks it up now. Has to get it to Marlow between the circles near the timeline. Around the ball screen down the lane, throws it over Webb. That's good. Marlow hits another. She's got double figures. 49-47, Lady Devils down two. Gorville with it on the right side. Pritchard pass in the left corner. Three ball coming from Sullivan is so good. Did everything but go in. Miller has it for the Lady Devils up the right side in the front court. Lob pass Marlow underneath. Stolen away by Goreville. Sullivan has it. Coming the other way for the Lady Cats. Between the circles. Goes left side to right. Right now leaves it off for Pritchett. Right wing. Three from Odom on the way. Good. Wow. What a dagger that is. 52 47. Goreville by five. 3 10 to go. Miller goes right side to laugh, and this may be the time to go for the Lady Devils. Marlow goes down the lane. Glass, good. There you go. Back-to-back lane shot, 52-49. Gorville the other way, right down the lane. Cut off by Miller. Right dribbles back out. Lob pass Webb underneath. Layup in. Boy, what a play. Webb is beating people down the floor and beating them to spots in the half court, 54-49. Well, she just made a good play there. Just kind of came out of nowhere for the free throw line. They, they got her eye played. She broke free, and it was an easy move. She had to hide it, man. Marlow went to the rim. Shot blocked by Odom. They get the rebound out to right. Down the lane over Miller. Left, left hand good. Gorville on a little bit of a run. It's 56-49. Rick Metcalf, what do we got? Nope, I don't even oh. want to time out. The foul beating to it. That foul was on right, her third. That's the team, uh, whatever. Should be eight. I say ninth. Rick Metcalf's going to time, call a timeout. Miller will go to line to shoot to one and one. While they get settled for the timeout, we'll tell you Community First Bank has more Jefferson County locations than anyone else. Locally owned with decisions made here. Proud supporters of Jefferson County with locations 
And now you have Dick Woodlawn and Sue and Mount Vernon for you Cessna Valier fans. You can hear your Devils tomorrow night. The Red Devils will be on the road in Woodlawn tomorrow night. And we at the WMI Sports Jefferson County Basketball Showcase will be there for that game tomorrow night. Denny Zawinski, me. We as an entity will be there. We as an entity will be there. Denny Zawinski, me, Mike Richardson will be there for that one. So, SB Red Devils fans, you can listen to 94.1 right here tomorrow night or online at WMIXports.com. It's Fester Blair versus Woodbond, and what has been a good game in recent years, many a time with teams making long trips in postseason. Here, Lady Devils down seven, Chris, with 2.24 to go. It's almost go time right now for SBW. Oh, it's go time indeed. You're down seven. Three possession ball game, 2.24 left. And the shots just haven't been coming over the past few, few, well, not few minutes, the past minute and a half ever since that timeout. You kind of hope things are going to change here a little bit. You're one and one at the line, of course, with Chelsea Miller at the line. Kind of got to get these baskets. They're the utmost important right now. And, of course, that's be the boys will be back on the showcase February 5th as well when yep. they take on Waltonville. We will have the Waltonville SB game. We're at Cesar Valera that night as well. So for USB Red Devils fans, you can listen here. We'll cover SB a lot of times down the stretch. Free throw miss. Goreville with a basketball. Allison Webb has it at the top of the key. Pressure band to man for the Devils. That's a foul in Pittsburgh. That's a touch foul. 16 foul on the Lady Devils. Goreville to trigger, side out of bounds. In front of the scorer's table, Williams will come in for pitch first. Rick Metcalf going with his starters, S.Q. Miller, Marlowe, Lappin, Williams. Inbounds coming, top of the key in the backcourt now. Odom throws it on the right wing to Webb with two minutes to go. Goreville and SVW in a battle. Winner gets the conference on the Western Division side. Right with it between the circles, leaves it for Webb. Webb now will hand off to Wright. Wright goes down the lane, picks it up. Miller all over, and that's a foul. Miller will pick up her third, and that will send Wright to the line to shoot the one and one. And this one starts getting a little tighter. Game time starts winding down. 152 to go in this one. Whenever this one ends, stay tuned for the Cesar Auto Body Post Game Show. Scoring in stats will also pick the Crossroads Community Hospital player of the game as well. Right at the line to shoot the one and one. First free throw is in, and she'll have another. The old rainbow. The old rainbow, it'll draw the street of dreams. Right. Saturday sports show every Saturday morning, AM 940, as well as at WMIsports.com. 808 to 10 AM every Saturday morning, Saturday sports show. The rainbow shot was short. And that'll be a miss. It's 57-49. That's looks straight out of her hand. A little perspiration caused that. And with 152 to go, SVW's down to eight. And then it's time to go if you're SVW. Here comes Miller across the timeline. Goes right wing to Williams in the corner to Eskew. Bob pass inside. Marlow works on Odom. Shot blocked. Rebound goes to Webb. Webb has it on the dribble, and there's a foul. Eskew will give it. And we'll walk the other way, and Webb will shoot the one and one. Tonight, Webb is seven out of eight from the free throw line. The winner of this, if Goreville wins, they'll go, I believe, to eight and oh in the conference. As they work their way toward the conference title in that West Division. A lot of expectations on this Goreville Lady Blackhead team who went to the Super last year. Free throw, no good. Bodies to the floor. Williams on the rebound. Williams will bring it into the front court. She'll bring it to the top of the key, gets it right side to lap, and her three on the way is no good off the mark. Rebound goes to Odom, kicks it out to right, who's behind the defense. Lappin's back has to give, layup good. Lappin couldn't afford the foul, 10-point lead, and Scoreville may sneak out of here with a win. There goes Miller to the rim, layup no good, Odom fouls. Miller will go to line and shoot two. Fourth foul on Odom, Danny, but... There's enough time left where fourth foul now is in quite a struggle for the fourth foul state sometime late in the second quarter, early in the third as the people start to depart. Yep, some people left early will miss. Get here late, leave early. Don't get to see a lot of the game. First free throw from Miller is good. She'll have another. She's got 12. 59-50, 1.14 to go. There'll be one more. Up and no good. Hits the floor. Oh, no good. Rebound to Darnell. Boy, SPW had an opportunity to get that ball and couldn't grab it. Webb into the front court. A lot of screaming going on with one minute to go from everybody around. 
Jessie Sarai has the basketball. She's been a nice ball handler for Goreville. Really like what she does with the basketball. Left wing Darnell goes to the corner, top of the key. Down here comes right again down the lane. How top of the key. And Webb will have it under a minute to go. Goreville running some clock. Much to their favorite, but they threw it away. Laughing on the seal. Laughing will bring it into the front court. Keep going to the rim. There ain't nobody stopping her. Down the lane scores. Timeout, set for Valier, Waltonville, 59-52 with 39 seconds to go. And, Chris, it's a matter of is there enough time left to get back to seven-point deficit. Well, I mean, anything's possible. We've seen eight points in five seconds before. Granted, that was a different level, different association. But, I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibility. But the point is that right now you have to come up with some stops on Goreville and convert those into points. But is there enough time to do that? We'll see with 40, right around 40 seconds left, 39.2 to be exact, but all in all, this one has been as advertised. We've talked about that along the way, just how great of a contest this has been. And it's just been nice to be here, see this, see this high caliber basketball, and a lot of high energy here tonight with Central Valier doing things right, not only at this co op, but by how they put this senior night together for a special group of girls. I, from the Goreville perspective, you have to be impressed. They come into a beehive environment, lots of emotion, a lot of atmosphere going on. Rattled early. Actually, didn't rattle. Just didn't hit shots early. Once they start hitting shots, the defense was there. The shots started to fall. This Goreville team used this big game situation. They showed it early on, and they're back in this game. And they and did. Just to kind of give you an example, 10% for the inside first quarter, 25% second, 50% in the third quarter. They just got better and better inside. They're not rattled by the big game environment. They get it in the Darnell. She'll throw it to the timeline to right. It's a two-on-one. Odom and right. Right to the rim. Foul from behind by Miller. And Goreville has been very good at throwing over the defense and or working situations where they were down in numbers into a fast break two-on-one, three-on-two opportunity. Well, we talked about how big of a game this is. Yes, it is. But you, you think about how they played the winning girl and, and Jamaica Jones, the Count Harris Feature City in the Salem Super last year. And they have the big game experience. And when you play tough competition like that, that deep in the year, I'm not saying that SPW is a by any means because they are not. They're a great team, but you've been in pressure-packed situation. You know how to win, so it's no surprise that we're seeing this down the track. Yeah, one of two free throws made for right. 60-52, SPW down now by eight. Three on the way is good. Ray Lappin, three goggles went up, 60-55. And then there's Ray Lappin who has no fear. She displayed. She's on a different level of mentality than most people in terms of here. They're saying that she doesn't have on the basketball floor, and that's a constant. She plays very aggressive. And that's a great thing not to have on the court. SBW needs to foul. 4-4 four, four pressure, ball rolling out of bounds. Timeout, Mike Helton. It'll be a 30-second timeout. And trying to get things settled. And just when you feel like you can exhale, exhale on behalf of the Black Cats, Danny, the Lady Devils come back and do something to stick that pitchfork back into this game, but that's a big three by Ray Lappin. And now you have a five-point game. You have 23 seconds, still plenty of time now. 60-55, we remind you, you're not a number of credit score. Community First Bank of the Heartland, you're a person or business with needs. And through the good and the bad, Community First Bank of the Heartland will stand by you. The showcase will be in Woodlawn tomorrow night. Woodlawn versus Seth for the Lear Boys Basketball. I and Mike Richardson will be there as well. The WMI Sports Global Studios will be driven there tonight and tomorrow night by Fort Square and King City Christ. On the side out of bounds, Floorville taking it in to Sullivan. Sullivan foul given by Pittsburgh. Sullivan will go to the other end. That's the 10th foul. Two shots now for Goreville. The amazing thing about this, the defensive intensity has not left SPW. And you think with so many players who score fouls, you think that you've kind of come a little lax defensively, but give them a lot of credit for making the game adjustments necessary to still be very aggressive, very assertive with so many players who score fouls. First free throw up and in by Sullivan. She'll get another. How great is she been tonight? Oh. Pretty darn good. The Goreville program, boys and girls, was very good for many years in the two-class system. They're shining in four-class. Here comes Seth Revelier, Waltonville, Miller down the lane, splits the double team, stolen, and that will just about do it. Odom has it, foul given by Miller. Chelsea Miller will foul out with what I have at 12 points. Is that what you have? This time that is accurate. All right, great. I'm glad I got something right number-wise tonight. Cross the timeline, and we'll shoot two free throws. Miller will foul out. 
senior who's playing her final game here at Cesar Valera High School on this particular floor. Of course, she's got hopefully a lot more left in postseason. She will check out. Brian Miller will check in. Williams will check out. Williams is still in. She thought she was going out. She had that look of what? She couldn't figure out. If she went out, there's four players. Maddie Garner is going to check in as Rick Metcalf probably conceding at this point as Odom hits the first. Odom's been huge off the bench, too. Nine points off the bench for her. That's been a key because you look at Seth Verlier's bench scoring. By my book, I only see four points. That's been a difference as Gorbill's bench. Odom misses the free throw and then runs over the line to compound that problem. Got to wait till that ball hits the rim. You can't leave till it does that, kids. Here comes Carson Sievers into the game. She'll come in for Pitchford. Mariah Miller, Ray Lappin, Carson Sievers, Rachel Marlowe, and Maddie Garner for the Lady Devils with 12.8 seconds to go. Lappin will bring it across the timeline. She's going to the rim. I'm telling you that right now. And she scores. Lappin scores 63-57. That's how this one's going to end, maybe. Ball to the floor, and that's how this one will end. Final score tonight, Gorville 63, SBW 57. We'll step out for a break, come back to the Cesar Auto Body Post Game Show. You're listening to SBW Lady Devils Basketball in the Showcase on WMIX. I'm Evie Brown with Dave Bowers. We'll look at your next ride weather. Breezy and warm tonight with a shower on a couple of occasions. A low of 56. Tomorrow, cloudy, breezy, warm. A couple of showers. I near the record of 70 set in 2002. Tomorrow night, periods of rain and a heavy to severe thunderstorm. Breezy and mild, a low 45 to 49. And then on Wednesday, it's breezy and turning colder with clouds and a stray shower. Temperatures will wind up in the low 40s. Next ride weather from WMIX, Mount Vernon, Illinois. Sometimes we sacrifice convenience for safety. Not anymore. Hi, Roy Schmidt Dodge dealer, King City Chrysler, Mount Vernon. The 2013 Dodge Caravan SXT allows for convenient loading and unloading. With SXT's available power dual sliding doors and lift gates, the awkward load and unload becomes a thing of the past. It's easy to see why the Caravan is an IIHS top safety pick with a multitude of safety and security features. See how you can save up to $2,000 cash allowance or qualify for 0% financing for up to 36 months on the 2013 Dodge Grand Caravan SXT at King City Chrysler Center, 1603 Broadway in Mount Vernon, Illinois, or browse all of our inventory at kingcitychrysler.com. Don't forget to find us on Facebook. There's still time to save at Newell Furniture in the General Store in Woodlawn. Newell Furniture's store-wide cleanup sale is still in progress with drastic furniture markdowns and extra cash discounts. Save on all Lazy Boy reclining furniture, sofas, holiday, TV consoles, bedrooms, dining rooms, ceiling bedding, and more. Plus, save 75% off all Christmas items, 50% off select merchandise at the General Store. Newell's in Woodlawn, cleaning up to save you more. Does it frustrate you when the person in front of you at the grocery store searches in their purse for what seems to be half an hour trying to find exact change? Tell them about People's National Bank's Visa Check Cards and make everyone's shopping experience a little quicker. Just swipe your card, sign your receipt, and you don't have to worry about exact change. Need cash back? Just enter your PIN and select the cash back button and you have an instant ATM. Sessor Auto Body would like to take a moment to remind everyone driving to and from the game to drive safe and be alert. Sometimes events happen beyond your control. When it does, take your vehicle to the collision pros. Sessor Auto Body is pre-approved by most insurance companies throughout Southern Illinois. This allows them to get the parts ordered quicker, getting you back on the road faster and in showroom condition. Sessor Auto Body, 602 South Park in Sessor, or call 625-3523. That's 625-3523. This is the showcase on WMIX. The Cesar Auto Body Post Game Show starts now. Final score here tonight at SBW. Goreville beats the Lady Devils 63 57. Denny Swinsky, Chris, you go alongside on the Cesar Auto Body Post Game Show. 
Cessar Auto Body is pre-approved by most insurance companies. This means Cessar Auto Body can get your vehicle back on the road faster. Next time you have a collision, see the collision pros at Cessar Auto Body, 602 South Park in Cessar. Lady Devils lose to Gorville, 6357. We'll later on take a Crossroads Community Hospital player of the game. Why wait hours to other emergency rooms? Crossroads Community Hospital's emergency department pledges you'll be seen by physician within 30 minutes of your arrival. Lady Devils lose 63-57. We need to take a break when we come back. Scoring and stats of this ball game here tonight on the Showcase. You're listening to SVW Lady Devils Basketball on the Showcase on WMIX. I know you've heard about mortgage rates being all-time lows, but have you done anything about it yet? Hi, I'm Rick Pig, mortgage lender at Community First Bank. There's never been a better time at buying a home or refinancing an existing mortgage. The sooner you act, the more you save. And we'll be there to help you through every step of the way. For more information, visit us at comfirstbank.net or stop by one of our five locations. Community First Bank with locations in Mount Vernon, Woodlawn, Dix, and Ina. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. The Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois welcomes Dr. Beth Conrarty to their medical staff. Dr. Conrarty specializes in comprehensive pain management using a multidisciplinary team approach by working with other specialists for optimal diagnosis and treatment of pain. Dr. Conrarty will treat most conditions of the spine, including management of cancer pain. Dr. Beth Conrarty, helping to make life better day after day at the Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois in Mount Vernon. Call 618-242-3778. Back aches, bad hips, rickety knees? Why not try aquatic therapy? The Red Lake College Aquatic Center has more than a swimming pool. Try a six-lane, 75-foot lap pool along with a whirlpool 10 feet in diameter and a 10-foot by 20 hydrotherapy pool. Aquatic therapy is very affordable. In many cases, the tuition is waived entirely. With special access and dressing areas for the elderly and physically challenged, getting in the water is easy. Experts are on hand to assist with various areas of aquatic fitness and rehab. Call 437-5321, extension 1207, or visit rlc.edu. What is good sports talk, really? Around these parts, it's the WMIX Saturday Sports Show. Every Saturday morning after the 8 o'clock news. With a vast assortment of interviews and knowledgeable in-studio discussion, it's the most content-driven local sports show on the radio dial. And it's every Saturday morning after the 8 o'clock news. Only on AM 940 and WMIXSports.com. Where you can listen on your computer, smartphone, or any device. It's all made possible by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what healthcare should be. For more scores and insight, follow us on Twitter at WMIX Sports. Now, back to the showcase on WMIX. Andy Trojewski and Chris Hugo alongside the Setzer Valera Waltonville as the Gorville Lady Black Cats get an impressive road win tonight at Setzer Valera in Waltonville by a score of 63 57. The Setzer Auto Body post game show, they remind you, Setzer Auto Body does, that sometimes things happen in automobiles that are beyond your control when they do. Take your vehicle to Setzer Auto Body. They can get you on the road quicker in showroom conditions. Setzer Auto Body, 602 South Park. And Setzer, time for the scoring and stats for this one. I'll turn it over to Chris Hugo for those scoring and stats for right now. First, we're going to take a look at the team shooting for the SVW Lady Devils on the night. They were 10 of 23 from the inside in the second half. Made them 18 of 45 for the game for 40%. They were 2 of 4 from the outside in the second half. Made them 3 of 8 for 37 and one half percent. They were 21 of 53 from the floor for 39.6%. For the Lady Black Cats, they were 14 of 44 from the inside for the game for 34, 39.1%. 6 of 15 from outside for 40%. Actually, it was 34.1% from the inside. 20 of 56 from the floor for 35.7%. Free throw shooting kind of got away from Gordville after a perfect first quarter. They were 8 of 15 in the second half, 18 of 29 for the game, still 62.1%. While SVW was 12th, 19th in the stride for 63.1%. Rebounding edge finally went to Goreville. They had 31 rebounds of the night. 20 of those were on the defensive boards. While SVW had 27 rebounds tonight, 21 of those were on the defensive class. Turnover disadvantage belonged to no one. Both teams had 13 turnovers unofficially on the night. Taking a look at your individual scores, first for SVW, Lady Devils. Had a game-high 24 from Ray Lappin, 12 points apiece from Chelsea Miller and Rachel Marlowe, who really came on strong in that second half. We had four points for Cheyenne Pitchford, three for Megan Eskew, and two for Michaela Williams to give them 57 points. Now for the victorious Scoreville Lady Black Cats, they had Allison Sullivan with a team-high 15, 13 points apiece from Allison Webb and Jessica Wright, nine points off of the bench for Taylor Oates. Uh, looks like eight from Brittany Pritchett, six from Haley Darnell, and that concludes the scoring as that gives us our final score of the Corvillity Black Cat 63, 
SVW 57. Both games, Goreville will win the conference, the Black Diamond in the West Division. SVW will have to beat CRC to stay out of the second place tie on Thursday night for all the marbles. We need to take a break. When we come back, says Chris and I will pick Crossroads Community Hospital player of the game. If you're listening to SVW, Lady Devils Basketball, in the showcase on WMIX. There's still time to save at Newell Furniture in the General Store in Woodlawn. Newell Furniture's store-wide cleanup sale is still in progress with drastic furniture markdowns and extra cash discounts. Save on all Lazy Boy reclining furniture, sofas, holiday, TV consoles, bedrooms, dining rooms, ceiling bedding, and more. Plus save 75% off all Christmas items, 50% off select merchandise at the general store. Newell's in Woodlawn, cleaning up to save you more. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency... Call 911. Daily schedules, scores, and more. Find WMIX Sports on Facebook. Back to the showcase on WMIX. Final score tonight, Goreville 63, SVW 57. Here on the Seth Rodden Body Post Game Show, they remind you to drive safe on the way home for the ninth game. Next time you have an accident, see the collision pros at Seth Rodden Body to get back on the road faster. 602 South Park and Seth are player of the game. Chris, we talked about it kind of came to a conclusion it is. Uh, if you know us, you know on senior night we're going with the seniors, of course. A great season. Not over yet, of course, for SVW, but their seniors, of course, you take a look at all they've been able to accomplish. Ray Lapp, of course, had 24 tonight. Chelsea Miller with 12. Uh, Megan Eskew had three. And off of the bench, Mariah Miller came in and gave it a heck of an effort. So the seniors really combined for a total of 39 of the 57 points. Great effort tonight. For that, there are Crossroads Community Hospital. Jefferson County Showcase Players of the Game. Why wait hours in other emergency rooms? Crossroads Community Hospital's emergency department pledges you'll be seen by a physician within 30 minutes of your arrival. Yeah, you can hear the blowers in the background. They're on. Doesn't look like it's electric, so we need to get out of here for the gas fumes to start taking over. CO, baby. That's right. Four, I think it was a Jesse. Jesse was back in the studio tonight, right? Yes, Our W Mike Sports team with Jesse Clark, Chris Hugon, Dennis Wimsey. Final score tonight, Doraville 63, SVW 57. Thank you for listening, and good night, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX and WMIXSports.com. Presented by Community First Bank of the Heartland. Welcome back to Personal Banking. The showcase is also sponsored in part by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what healthcare should be. The Collision Pros at Cesar Auto Body. Newell Furniture and the General Store in Woodlawn. Red Lake College. It's time. Visit your virtual counselor at rlc.edu. And by Coach House Garages. Ford Square and King City Chrysler. You can count on us. The Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois. State Farm Agent Scott Owens. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And People's National Bank. For inside information before, during, and after the game, log on to WMIXSports.com or find us on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. We are your home for news, talk, sports, and today's hot country. WMIX.